According to Gooseworks, the new episode will be one of the best among all the episodes, which means we are looking forward to its release, which is expected to be soon. That means it's time to discuss the most interesting topics and questions about the new episode. What will be the new location? Who is the new anti-hero? This and much more about episode 3 we will discuss today, and I will tell you what to expect. There are still a lot of questions that have not been answered, such as what happened to Candy Kingdom after Fudge Monster returned and who he is, but I'm sure it's all been left out on purpose for us to figure out for ourselves. Or some speculate that some of the teasers could also be related to the new episode, because we didn't see anything like that in the second episode. But I want to assure you that this will not be the case, and we will not see any continuation of Candy Kingdom story, because it is a finished chapter of the Digital Circus story, and even if after the characters returned to the Digital Circus, the kingdom did not disappear, Fudge obviously tried to leave it in ruins, and maybe this teaser is related to that, and nothing more. Besides Candy Canyon Kingdom, we have three more locations. A stadium, a fast food restaurant, and a mystical house. And since we know that the main character of the third episode will be Zubal, and the scene with Spudzy's fast food restaurant features Jax and the stadium is not finished yet, it is likely that the mystical house headed by Martha Mildenhall will be the new place of our character's adventure. But before we get to the storyline, I'd like to tell you about the release date of the new episode and why we won't have to wait as long as we did for episode 2. The pilot episode is a test of the new show, and, based on its results, the creators decide whether to continue or close the show. And since producing 25 minutes of such content takes a huge amount of time and money, no one would risk developing a pilot and a second episode at once, and that's why we had to wait six months. It is important to note that along with the development of the second episode, the third episode was also being developed, and this also delayed the release of episode two. And since the math is simple, we can assume that the new episode will be released in August or mid-September, so we won't have to wait that long, and this applies to all the next episodes as well. Now let's get back to the events that may happen in Episode 3. We have found out that the main hero will be Martha Mildenhall and her faithful pet Ghost-like Seal, and the main anti-hero of Episode 3 will be just reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. But agree that these names are too long, so for convenience we will call them Martha, Seal, and Tape Recorder. In the final of the second episode, we saw the warmth that Pomni has been missing for so long. I would even say she experienced friendly support from everyone except Jax. And after that, as usual, we went away from the characters, but one of the latest teasers showed us that in addition to Kaufmo, there is another equally important photo, Gummy Goo. And while everyone is enjoying the sweets that Kane gave them after Candy Career Chaos, only Pomni is grieving for her friend who spent so little time with her. After the characters eat the candy, they return to Pomni to comfort her, and then again, it's night, room, sleep, and the unpleasant Kane, who said that today they will have a new journey, but this time it will be different from the events of the second episode. And although Zubal again refused to participate, this time Cain sent her there by force. And this is an important detail because as Gooseworks told us a long time ago, episode three will reveal the truth about Zubal. So they went to a mystical house with a 19th century atmosphere. And while they were looking around, they always heard some strange noises, but it was something like this that scared them the most. And then they meet Martha, who appears and disappears abruptly. And of course everything is scary, but as soon as they turn back, they see the woman who looks like she is stuck in the 19th century, and she starts her story. A long time ago, she was the sole owner of this house. She had a large family and a strange pet, a seal. But at one point at home began to happen strange and even paranormal phenomenon. First, the doors began to open by themselves, then began to disappear paintings, and then people. And so Martha Mildenhall and her pet were left alone. And when they realized that all to blame for the tape recorder, they began to look for a way to get rid of it. And after hundreds of years of searching, they found a hidden tape that can destroy the tape recorder. But as soon as they decided to do it, that tape immediately disappeared and around constantly began to sound some sounds. And so Kane sent them on this amazing mystical adventure to find the tape and use it to destroy the tape recorder so that Martha and her seal could go to the world of ghosts and be safe that their home is now safe. Pomni, unlike the others, was the most shocked and apparently Kane had been organizing a similar adventure for a long time. Besides Pomni, Zubal was also surprised because she, like many times before, decided to skip the adventure and stayed in the circus. Martha Mildenhall left her pet as a navigator, and they all set off together to explore the mystical house in search of the cherished goal. And for a long time, nobody was confused that tape recorder should not be able to walk or move somehow, and only after a chance meeting with him, they realized what his strong point was. Let's remember Fudge Monster, who is also an integral part of Episode 2, but is not as popular as Gummy Goo, even if he ended up being a negative character. 
I'm 99% sure that the mystical house is complicated by the fact that there are dozens or maybe hundreds of monsters hidden inside it that are loyal servants of the tape recorder, and it is because of them that he is able to cause so much trouble for Martha and Seal. I think that all the characters split up to find the main villain would be much easier, and that's when Zubel will show his real face. We know her as a rude, arrogant, but at the same time, very sincere girl who always says and does what she thinks without hiding anything. If she doesn't like something, everyone will know about it, and most importantly, she is the only one who is able to oppose the main bully of the digital circus. At the same time, she can really feel friendly feelings and compassion for the others, and it was clearly shown to us by the funeral scene of Kaufmo. Zubel will reveal herself, and we will see that behind the mask of rudeness lies the usual fear of not being accepted by the others, and straightforwardness is just an unsuccessful way to express it. And while Jax will walk around the mystical house and look for fun, the others will support Zubel and try to raise her self-esteem and finally find herself, and they will succeed, and eventually, Zubel will lead everyone else. Since the Digital Circus is a very amazing place where anything is possible, even Seal will be able to talk and like in the second episode with Gummy Goo, Pomni will be able to make friends with him. And despite Ragatha's attempts to dissuade Pomni from one more stupid idea to return another NPC to the circus, Pomni will insist on her own, because she is the only one who still has sincere human feelings and desire to help everyone else, and the realization that it is unrealistic does not scare her in any way, but even on the contrary, encourages her. While they will be looking for tape recorder, they will have to meet many creatures who want only one thing, to prevent the characters from finding tape recorder, and they are ready to do absolutely everything for the sake of their goal, because they will be so programmed. And when the final target will be waiting for them at one of the doors, it is logical that everyone will run after him, and since Kinger is the most determined, he will go first, followed by Zubel. And that's when the turn of events that no one expected will happen. Tape Recorder has thought of everything in advance, and as soon as the first character decides to go to the threshold of the room and falls into the pit in which there is a trap in the form of many monsters, the tunnel closes immediately, and the next characters will find themselves in a room that is also not as simple as it seems at first glance. This is the room of memories, and Zubel will relive all the fears she has experienced during her long stay in the digital circus, and as soon as she comes out, we will see on her face a genuine horror, and she will collapse on the ground without any signs of life. And at that moment, Jax appears with some useless statue in his hands and says another inappropriate joke. All the characters will have gotten back together and start looking for Kinger, who fearlessly destroys all the monsters. And we'll see the same old scene where he hits someone with a shotgun. The other characters arrive and Jax decides to show his coolness and throws the statue at one of the monsters, but misses and hits the painting behind, which is hidden the cherished tape that Martha Mildenhall needs so much. And after a short scene of praise, she inserts the tape into the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and then sends all the circus people home. However, upon arrival, Kane sees the NPC again and destroys it again. And at that moment, Zubel wakes up, who has had enough of the new adventure, and we see the familiar Zubel again, who sends everyone away and says that she will never go on an adventure again in her life, but this time her words will have some kindness in them. And Pomni will be finally disappointed in their administrator, and will realize that the only friends she can have are the inhabitants of the digital circus. And then it's back to dinner and sleep. What do you think about my version of episode 3? And if you have your own theories, then welcome in the comments. Bye bye everybody. Bye bye.